I think IV fluid is an interesting concept because it is, uh, it's an interesting topic. Uh, this is a drug that has been around for over 150 years, and yet we're still learning today how to optimize this drug, both in which drugs we choose and which solutions we choose, as well as how we dose these to bring benefits to our patients today. And what I want to do is spend a little time going through some of the more recent evidence that really sets the stage for a relook at the way in which we use these medications uh, to treat uh, and optimize our patients. So why don't we go ahead and jump in. One of the things that I think uh, all of us as clinicians intuitively understand is this curve that's here in front of us. And what we know is that if you give too much IV fluid, you get into problems of volume overload, tissue edema and organ failure, uh, increased ICU stays. Likewise, if you're in a critical situation and you're trying to expand the patient's blood volume, not giving enough fluid, uh, on the other hand, can also cause problems with tissue hyperperfusion and hypoxia. So we know that there's this important sweet spot that we're trying to get to. I think what is different today is that we're learning getting to that sweet spot is probably more important than we've ever appreciated before. And there's new techniques and new technologies that allow us to, uh, to arrive at that sweet spot. I want to set the stage for this by going through some of the uh, uh, more recent literature uh, on, um, on, on fluid management and the risks associated with uh, fluid management. One of the things uh, that's always been raised is, can, does our choice of fluid, does the way in which we dose fluid, the way in which we use it, actually cause direct harm? Or is it simply the matter that we're using these in, in patients that are severely ill uh, and, and the mortality or complications we see are simply related to their comorbidities and the severity of illness? And I want to point to two um, uh, more recent uh, works uh, here uh, that uh, really begin to tease out this fact that no, fluid in and of itself is an independent predictor of mortality. Um, there were two studies that were done. One uh, was done uh, by Paul Merrick, uh, and uh, we were part of this. Um, and what it showed was we looked at 23,500 patients with severe sepsis and septic shock who were admitted to the ICU through the emergency room. And we looked at the fluid management. And we did a propensity analysis where we uh, adjusted for uh, patient comorbidities, uh, patient uh, disease factors, and uh, risk factors. And what we saw was that on day one, fluid averaged about 4.4 liters, uh, and uh, average length of stay in the ICU for these patients about 5.4 days. Typical uh, data that's elsewhere reported in the literature. But what we saw with the propensity analysis, it's actually quite interesting. For each liter over five liters of fluid on day one, mortality began to climb by 2.3%. And this is represented in this lower graph here of the green being the predicted um, uh, uh, mortality that you would see based on amount of fluid administered. And you begin to see this separate out here uh, over five liters. And so at six, seven, eight, nine liters, uh, you really begin to uh, associate increased uh, mortality. Uh, related to fluid, which is unrelated to uh, other, other patient factors that were included in the model. A similar work was done in a surgical setting, and here this was looking at 36,000 patients with major abdominal surgery, and again, while the colors are reversed, this, the green being the actual um, uh, mortality in, incurred versus the uh, gray, which would be expected from the propensity analysis in the model, you begin again seeing this diverge at about six liters or so on day one of surgery. And you'll see that mortality again increased about uh, 2% for every liter above uh, six liters. Uh, and certainly part, uh, other uh, work that was done here too began to show that pulmonary and cardiac complications actually started going up after about five liters. So this concept is, does fluid cause direct harm when it's overdosed or used excessively? And the answer to that I think as we look at the literature and we uh, begin to look at more experiences, yes. And so we want to make sure that as we're doing this, this concept of load them up, take it off later, yeah, that really doesn't work so much. And we need to, um, we need to stop doing that. We actually need to get better at dosing fluid up front. Uh, and I think there are some techniques to, uh, to go after that, which we're going to spend a little bit of time on. 